Okay, 1550 somatic cell count, SCC, dairy hearts uh, can be a big issue. So nationally in Ireland we've got really done a massive job in, in fairness to cell check and the farmers uh, right up and down the country, we've dramatically dropped our somatic cell count nationally by over 100,000 over the last 10 years nearly. So it's something we've got really good at, but it still causes problems. So, so what is somatic cell count? Basically in your udder of your cow, um, when you have certain invading bacteria coming in, there'll be reaction to them. Uh, and our typical bacteria we see with cell count is Staphylococcus aureus. And what the body does is the immune system will produce somatic cells, which are a lot of the time white blood cells, to come in to fight those infections. Now in chronic infections like uh, Staphylococcus aureus, you'll have a, an increase of these somatic cells in the udder. And it's an indication of chronic infection, it's an indication of a, uh, you know, damage done to the milk production cells. And it's really, um, I suppose that's what it is, it's a reaction. And we can't see, so when we look at mastitis, there's two types really of mastitis. Clinical mastitis, which is very visible or clinical, and it's subclinical, this is subclinical mastitis. We can't see the changes in, in, in milk quality. Now there's some pathogens that will do both clinical mastitis and cause uh, subclinical mastitis, some, such as strep uberus, and we're seeing more of that as well. Um, so it's, that's what is somatic cell count. Why is it important for dairy farmers? It really affects milk quality. It's a really good indicator. Globally we use it to indicate milk quality. Um, when you have uh, chronic somatic cell counts uh, in cows, production losses are the big thing we don't see. Um, we're also trying to use less antibiotics on farm, and obviously if we have high somatic cell count issues, we're kind of chasing our tail. And these Staphylococcus aureus in particular are extremely difficult to, to treat. They often end up walled up like little microabscesses, and treatment success, certainly for the first time is bad, but second and third time is incredibly poor. And we'll talk about treatment worthiness in a bit. And of course, because these cows aren't improving, because treatments aren't working, culling becomes an issue then. And it's a real financial issue, it's a welfare issue in farms. But as I said, we're improving this, but when it does spike up, what do we do? Well, um, I think that's really key. What, what, what do we do when it spikes up? So there's some risk factors. When I think about somatic cell count, I use these sort of risk assessments uh, for all the work that I do. Um, and I really, it's about step by step by step by step going through problems on farm and looking at the risks and identifying things we're doing well and identifying risks and then just removing them as like, like little bottlenecks in the system. The machine obviously, because it's a real milking uh, routine spread, the machine plays a role. So every farmer should be able to kind of look, check the main vitals like vacuum, vacuum reserve, um, you know, liner changes, all that, are we doing it right? Then the routine, the milking routine itself, I'll talk about that, really important when it comes to somatic cell count, uh, identifying the problem cows. And I always do look when I think about somatic cell count because it is immunity and we need to think about that. Is there any underlying herd immunity issues uh, or stress on the animals that is uh, playing a role? And then drying off because our cows go through a full lactation. Drying off becomes a really good point in time that we can um, get other uh, infections like these in the dry period under control. Um, so there are some of the key uh, things I look at. Poor drying off, I suppose, technique, poor drying off procedures can, can lead to it. There is other risk factors, but I suppose today I'm just gonna really talk about some simple principles and reinforce, look, uh, the, the purpose of these videos was, um, you know, t there's a real, uh, I suppose, understanding. We're all thinking about how disease spreads. Uh, we're all washing our hands to prevent virus spread. I think it's really ap applicable when we're talking about somatic cell count control. And I look at a, the milking parlor almost like as a, as a food factory, basically, uh, and, and the same hygiene rules apply. So how do we control somatic cell count when we have a problem? If we can't see it, we've got to identify the problem cows. And we can do that through milk records, we can do it through CMT testing. So getting the problem cows uh, is really important. Um, you know, we can then, we can looking at treatments on farm, it's something, you know, because antibiotics are involved in treatments, you need to talk about your vet. And then you look at, if we're recording treatments, which is really critical, we can look at the success of those treatments. We can look at, you know, if cows aren't improving, is, you know, should we be drying off quarter? Um, you know, certain high cell count cows, depending on their age, their stage of the cycle, is culling an option? Um, looking at cultures to see what we're, 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 we, we have there and then I suppose focusing on any farm on the dry cow treatments. Now we're always looking to reduce antibiotic usage on farm and that's what I'm really uh, a strong advocate for. 
but uh, certain cows uh, in certain stages or certain cows will require antibiotic treatments we want to minimize that down but how effective are they so looking at new infection rates so looking at your dry period treatments and how well we're managing cell counts in those problem cows and records are really important when it comes to cell count they're just they're just vital and um, so I was going to be going doing this training uh, other things right across the Ireland and going to the UK with, with a company called Prodigy Neurovalve Genetics and they have a post t dip called Other Gold which is a really effective uh, control in part of a somatic cell count control program and I suppose t dipping is a really important thing to understand and post t dipping in particular is really important to understand why we do that but when we talk about tea dip tea dips i want you to remember three things the three v's the volume of the tea dip is really important so the volume they're using enough uh, of the tea dip um, then the viscosity so certain times certain problems require certain types of tea dip so the post tea dip you want it to stick onto that tea for as long as possible it's really important match that tea dip to the challenge and then visually making sure we're covering the full tea all around okay so that's a three v so the, why do we post t dip just talking about somatic cell count and i'm going to talk about routine in a while is that you know if a cow has a high somatic cell count and she's some bacteria here on her teeth end or you know close to the teeth end after milking what happens with that is when when if we don't post teeth dip correctly those bacteria proliferate around the teeth end on the skin of the teeth so when she comes back so this is between milkings when she comes back into milking parlor again, she's potentially going to spread it. So if we have a good post teeth dip, we're reducing down the spread of infection between milkings and between cows. And that's key. We can see these infections. We must minimize their spread. So when we look at the routine in the parlor, we look at, say, these are your line of cows. Here's your high cell count cow. We've got to try and identify these cows if we want to get control over it. But how does she spread if it's another and milk uh, born infection. The only way she can spread it really is through the machine or through hands in you know the milker themselves, the routine. So you can have an animal spreading from one to the other. Where's my red marker? You can imagine here. And next time that animal comes in, you have two animals, and this is how disease spreads. This is how somatic cell count spreads. So the routine becomes really, really critical. So when I look at somatic cell count, I really like to get into the parlor and look at the routine that's been done, step by step by step. And it is can be, somatic cell count issues can be a little bit frustrating. You know, we tend to say, what's the best tube? What can we do? Can we start it with teeth dipping alone? We can't, we need to look at all the risk factors. And when we start controlling them, we can get somatic cell count under control. Uh, it can have a massive impact on profit. And then I suppose, when we get the right routines in place and we get the right protocols, we get better at controlling it. We get better at trying to identify problems faster and we get, get, get control of problems faster. But the routine is critical. We need to think about how we apply the machine. We need to look at, uh, you know, teeth ends, vacuum reserves, all those sort of things. And then our own hygiene. You don't want to be the spread of disease, regularly replacing liners. And that's just a quick introduction um, to, I suppose, somatic cell count, some of the principles of it. Um, we are getting better at it, uh, and I think if I, rec records are so important. It's just like shooting, throwing darts in the dark if we don't have those records. So that's it, that's, um, that's somatic cell count, that's my thoughts. Just milk recording, get the machine right, focus on hygiene, find those problem cows, uh, and get really good at a consistent routine, because it pays off in the long term. Okay, thought for the day today, attitude determines outcome. I've experienced uh, having the right attitude and the wrong attitude, and both the wrong attitude can really be detrimental. And in tricky times, in difficult situations, my advice is, uh, you know, trying to, to pick our attitude, have the right attitude. It's not always easy, and um, there's a very good book, if anyone wants to challenge themselves in, in quiet times, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And he talks about the space between stimulus and response. And there is that space. And in that book, you know, that man, did, he was in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany in the most unimaginable uh, circumstances. And one of his big realizations was that he could pick his attitude, that he was in control of absolutely very little, but he could control his response to the situation he was in. It's an extraordinary book, and I think it's a great message for everybody. So, between stimulus and response, there is a space, and we determine that is. In difficult times, the right attitude can help people get through. That's my talk for today.